Oh man, this is a good one. <laughs> it turns out that Gage Grosskreutz, who now goes by the name Paul Prediger, is pretty mad. Man, he is hopping mad. And it all has to do with the sentencing of the dude who ran him over. Now keep in mind, Gage almost died. So this is a pretty serious matter. But evidently, that message didn't come across the desk of the judge. Hello out there. I'm trying to get through. With cold, blunt analysis cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from the exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's time for the Johnny Walker Dread Show. All right, so this is courtesy of the Kenosha County Eye. It is a newspaper where I get a lot of my information. Kevin Matthewson, who wrote this, is on top of things in Kenosha. And if you have any interest in the Kyle Rittenhouse story, the Kenosha shootings, Crystal Kaiser, or anything coming out of that area, you really need to subscribe to the Kenosha County Eye. But let's go ahead and read this. It's hilarious. And there he is, Gage Grosskreutz. And I'm telling you, Gage, you really looked a lot better with hair. That doesn't quite do it. Maybe you had premature balding? I don't know. But whatever. That ain't rocking it. Okay, so Kevin provides the background. We'll go ahead and read this. On September 2nd, 2023, on East Brady Street in Milwaukee, Paul Prediger, formerly known as Gage Grosskreutz, and that is the worst kept secret on the planet. <laughs> he changes his name to Paul Prediger, but everybody knows him now as Paul Prediger, so it didn't work. At any rate, he was run over by a 31-year-old Milwaukee man named Marvin Thomas. According to Prediger, he was able to learn the identity of the driver of the vehicle, which was not immediately known to police. And by the way, I have a video that covers this incident because they'll demonetize me for it. But uh, go to the link above and you can see it. I also have his commentary on what he had to go through to find out who did this. And there's another link here. So go to the links so you can watch my old videos on this. On September 20th, 2023, Thomas was charged in Milwaukee Circuit Court with felony hit and run great bodily harm and knowingly operating a motor vehicle while revoked cause great bodily harm okay so this is a felony great bodily harm gage was busted up really bad over this and you know i don't rejoice in that at all i mean gage is a human i don't want to see anybody hurt and he was pretty badly hurt in the deal and i don't think anybody should be happy about that and i'm being serious here okay all right, we move on. Thomas faced 30 years in the Wisconsin prison system if convicted. Prediger is widely known for being the only man shot by Kyle Rittenhouse to survive. Defense attorney Lori Ann Kuhn and Milwaukee County Assistant District Attorney Stephen Knowlton cut a deal the morning of the trial. Okay, okay, sounds pretty normal. Which irritated Prediger. Hang on. He was, after all, preparing to tell a jury of strangers that he was run over, resulting in the tearing in all of the ligaments in his neck, cracking of his teeth, breaking his shoulder, breaking half of his ribs, a broken wrist, a collapsed lung, and a lacerated liver. He was nailed, and he's very lucky to be alive. Now, remember... Paul Prediger, Gage Grosskreutz, is a fierce advocate for people of color. He leads the charge of social justice. He's a revolutionary fighting against mass incarceration of peoples of color. So who hit him? This dude. <laughs> uh, karma's a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> okay. But that's okay. You know, it happens. You know, you know, they make up 15% of the population. So if you get run over, there is a chance that a person of color may have done it. That's not the problem here. Wait until you hear about the sentence. And this is the judge. <laughs> I think you know where this is going. Thomas was sentenced on July 22nd, 2024 by Milwaukee County Circuit Court Judge Corey Ashley, a Governor Tony Evers appointee and the daughter of Milwaukee's chief judge, Carl Ashley. 
Uh-oh, <laughs> you know where this is going. Ashley violated Marcy's law and the open seatings in court statutes and constitutions provisions by calling the case 32 minutes early. But okay, we're going to talk about that in a moment. And she really screwed up here. Okay, she's incompetent. All right. But here, this, this is where it gets funny. She then undercut the generous plea deal by giving Thomas only, are you ready for this? Two and a half years in prison, uh, cutting the agreed upon prison of four years by 40%. <laughs> Remember, we've got to fight against the mass incarceration of peoples of color. Right on. Isn't that how it goes, Gage? Prediger showed up to the sentencing hearing on time and with friends. He was shocked and angered to learn that the sentencing was conducted without him having the chance to speak before sentencing and have his victim impact statement affect the sentence. He has a valid argument. Prediger sent a letter to the court saying in part, Dear Judge Ashley, I am writing to formally express my deep concern and dissatisfaction with the handling of the recent court case, whatever, in which I was the victim Specifically, the fact that the court case was called 32 minutes earlier than the scheduled time. This unexpected change deprived the public of their right to be present during the hearing, true, and violated my rights as a victim to participate and speak at the defendant's sentencing hearing. That's also true. I received no notice from the prosecutor about this schedule change and was outside your courtroom well in advance. I contacted the victim rights advocate several times this morning as I had every intention of being present for the defendant's sentencing hearing. My assistance and cooperation throughout the entire 10-month process, including providing the evidence necessary to arrest and charge the defendant, should have demonstrated my commitment to this case and its outcome. Hey, I will say this, man. That's a pretty good letter, Gage. I mean, that's well written. I'm not being sarcastic. Well done. not going to do you good, <laughs> but, but it was a well-written letter. As a victim, my right to be heard during sentencing is protected under Marcy's law. This law ensures that victims of crimes have equal constitutional rights on the same level as those accused and convicted of crimes. It also ensures that victims have the opportunity to provide input, express the impact of the crime, and participate in the judicial process. He's right. Calling this case 32 minutes earlier than scheduled without advance notice to me unfairly denied me this crucial opportunity to exercise my rights. With that, Judge Ashley held a hearing yesterday, July 29th, to allow Prediger to speak. Or is it Prediger? I may have been mispronouncing this all along, but then again, since it's a made-up name, I'm not sure there is a proper pronunciation. Both her and the prosecutor acknowledged the Marcy's Law violation. You had no choice, because it was a blatant violation. There was no counter-argument to it. Judge Ashley stated in court, The victim was still deprived of an opportunity to speak at the hearing. And deprived by who? Hmm, let me think here. Oh yeah, it was you, Judge Ashley which is his right under chapter 950, as well as now our constitution with regard to Marcy's law. It shouldn't have happened. It did happen. And why? Because you did it. I scheduled this hearing promptly. A terrible thing happened to the victim in this case that should not have happened. Now, notice the passive construction here in everything she's saying. She's not taking any accountability for any of this. A terrible thing happened. It should not have happened. The victim was deprived. Completely ignoring the fact that it was the judge that did it. And there's no excuse for doing it. I mean, if you call such a hearing 30 minutes early, you know you're depriving the victim of his rights. I'm crazy. I'm the local one. <clears throat> this was no tough call. Why did you do it, Judge Ashley? Well, I'll tell you, you're incompetent. 
okay? You're just incompetent. No competent judge would have made that mistake. Paul did write a letter to the offender, and I'm not going to read it here. It's a little long, and uh, I'll post a link in the description below, so if you want to read it, you can. So let's continue on here. Prediger closed by asking for a resentencing. Neither the prosecutor nor the judge allowed a new sentencing, despite Prediger not being in court. So in other words, it's terrible that we violated his rights, but nah, we're not going to resentence him. <laughs> oh, man. Just remember, Gage, the dude that hit you was not a right-wing MAGA dude, and the judge who basically slapped him on the wrist isn't MAGA either. You wished it was, because a MAGA judge would have come down hard. Prediger agreed to an interview after court from KCE. Well, that's kind of weird, because Kevin Mathewson and Paul Prediger don't exactly get along. At all. Nada. Zero. Prediger said that the leniency that the judge showed Thomas was kind of a slap in the face to me. It is, but I think more so it's a slap in the face to the community because reckless driving is definitely an issue here in Milwaukee. And I think what I was trying to illustrate with my impact statement was that not many people have the opportunity to see their, I guess, assailant, whatever you want to call it, in court. Well, wait, what happened to that mass incarceration of peoples of color argument. Now, I'm not seeing he's ever argued it, but he has been very vocal in the far left social justice crowd. So I'm very interested in hearing his comments about what he thinks of mass incarceration of peoples of color. It goes on. A lot of people are just hit and ran on the road and left to die, and nobody knows who did it. Martin Thomas, the defendant, has multiple priors for burglary, multiple OWIs, driving while revoked. So, multiple priors for burglary, multiple OWIs, he hits, drags you 30 feet, almost kills you, he hits and runs, so you have to track him down, and he got a little over two years. Slap. <laughs> Yeah, now you know how us conservatives feel, Paul. It took you getting hurt to realize it. But if that dude had hit me, dragged me 30 feet, I wonder what you would have been advocating. No cash bail, no cash bail. A local criminal defense attorney told KCE that, fortunately, the judge can't be sanctioned for a violation of Marcy's Law by the Victim's Right Board, but only the Wisconsin Judicial Commission. Well, wait, why is that fortunately? What are you saying there, Kevin? As for starting the hearing 32 minutes early, the Judicial Commission could discipline Judge Ashley for that violation as well. And guess what? It ain't going to happen. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Nothing is going to happen to that judge. Go to the Kenosha County Eye for more information. Like my video and subscribe to my channel.